I look at the amount of money they spend on those cars now, we're in it for the fun. We just do it for the fun. If it isn't fun, we leave the car home for weeks. The adrenaline rush is probably my favorite just because the minute you get in that car and you fire up the engine and you start thinking how fast you're going through these corners. Darren Smith, driver of the 12S Midwest Modified, has come a long way in his racing career at such a young age. He gets a lot of help in the pits from his dad and his uncle, and he also gets some pointers from some other veteran drivers. I'm only 17 years old now, and uh, I live out in here in West Fargo, North Dakota, so it's kind of nice to be close to the racetrack. And uh, my uncle's always been He's been racing ever since I was just little, so it's kind of been something that's been in the family for a while. And, and I mean, my dad's always been into cars and everything, so I've grown up around the whole racing scene and all the cars and everything. I actually started in go-karts when I was uh, eight or nine years old. And that's when I first started in getting into it. And we raced those for a couple of years and then and then I was 13 the one year and my birthday is not until late into the racing season and we weren't like kind of not supposed to be racing until you're 14 but they said since my go-karting uh, experience they said that I could race a Hornet as long as I didn't cause too much trouble they said I could race a Hornet out in Glendon and Ada. So I started that uh, when I was 13 and uh, that was four years ago here is when that first started and we raced one full year then and then uh, we went to go start a second year and we had to bunk all of our spare motors and everything. We ended up using them all up before we got halfway through the season. So, so we quit that and we started putting our money aside to build a Midwest Modified. And then uh, last year was my rookie year in the Midwest Mod. And so I started my second year this year and Right now we're kind of looking at a third year next year. Usually it's just me and my dad, but everyone, uh, especially towards the end of the season, my uncle started coming out with us more often. So it's kind of nice to have someone else there with you, especially when I don't know the car totally on my own. So at least when I have these two there, they know the car, they can teach me something new. I like to get in my car a little early, just so that way I have the time to, re to relax. You can kind of get that mindset, rather than rushing to get in the car and then think, worrying about being late to get on the track, not getting in your spot in time, all that stuff. You can go line up, you can just sit in the car, and you just, you just breathe and relax. It's, so that's one thing I kind of like to do. You got guys that you know how to, they, you know for a fact they know how to drive so you don't have to worry about them being a little squirrely or anything. So, I mean, the experience definitely does help because I know my first year in the car, the first couple of nights, I was, I was almost scared to put the car in some places. And, but after a while, you get a little bit more comfortable and you'll get a little closer to cars and you won't worry so much about, am I gonna hit them? And if I touch them, are we gonna crash? What's gonna happen? Brian Bernadis and Dave Shipley and, and even Ben Mickelson, I mean, they're probably the three guys who talk to me the most and 
they'll watch me race a lot of the time and if they see me kind of make a small mistake here and there they'll come and tell me oh hey you kept doing this throughout the whole race so I mean if you fix this you could be a little faster but who knows and then they'll also sit there and they'll be it's kind of nice to have them watching because if you're kind of stuck way back in traffic during a feature or something you are if you are faster and all that but you couldn't find a way around them they could go well these front guys were running up this is the line that they were taking and you and those guys kept running here but you were still faster than them if you would have moved to this line you maybe could have shot by so it's nice to have those guys because they def and especially Dave and Brian and Ben because I mean I've known them for a while now and they actually like to sit and watch me race because they all think they want to they all want to watch me progress which is kind of nice to have people looking over your shoulder. I'd definitely love to get into the A mod class would probably be something I'd strive for. When you get in those A mods you got a bunch more horsepower. The Racing Life is sponsored by Dakota Cat, Norman County Raceway, Superior Builders, Valley Alignment and Repair, Northland and Harry's Towing, Besides dirt track racing, Darren has also competed in drag racing and autocross. It's the thrill of the speed and the drive to go faster that keeps him on the dirt. The adrenaline rush is probably my favorite just because the minute you get in that car and you fire up the engine and you start thinking how fast you're going through these corners and everything and especially tracks like Fergus, you go flying down that straightaway and if you don't turn there's a wall right there so it definitely keeps you on your toes. and. It's something kind of fun to do. To, I mean, it lets a guy just go out. You can go have fun at the track and everything. And I mean, when you get home, you don't have to worry because a lot of kids, like, a lot of kids don't have the resources to go out and race or do any kind of racing at all, like even drag racing. So then they start just, they start speeding on the streets all the time. And that's all they do because it's as close as they can get. and. I mean, it's one way to kind of get it out of your system. The first night that I actually won this year was probably the most memorable because uh, it started off the same way as the night that I almost won. The f I almost won one other time in Fargo. Me and uh, Tyler Peterson both started on the front row and when we took off, I held the lead, but then we had a caution and I ended up messing up a little bit and Rusty Coleman got past me but I mean, he got by me clean and I tried to pass him back for the last couple laps, but he had me, so and then, uh, but it started off the exact same. So I was a little superstitious then because I thought, okay, here comes another second because with my luck, it's going to go down to three laps and then all of a sudden someone's going to come up and pass me. Well, I ended up getting to go out in front right away and I held everyone and held my line and I tried to run a cl as clean of a race as possible and we had way more cautions than we had last time so I was so worried that every time we had a restart someone was gonna sneak up on me and pass me then and no one did so but it, me and, and then Peterson kept up with me and me and him got first and second so I mean it was kind of nice to have the two younger guys out there. When you're up in the front it gets it can definitely get nerve-wracking because I mean you could be in that front group of cars and you could be in the first four cars or whatever. You could just be checked out from everyone. 
but there could be a guy that had a bad heat race, had to start way in the back, and he started catching all of them, and then on that next restart, he could catch you guys, and all of a sudden, you're a couple spots back now. I've never actually been hurt while racing. I think the worst that I've had is I had uh, my back got a little screwed up my first night of go-karts. Uh, we didn't have the body ready yet, so we didn't have it on the cart. And one of the guys actually spun out here at West Fargo, and uh, as he spun out, I came across his front end, and it tipped the cart over on its uh, side, and it had me on, I had my head holding up the cart pretty much, so. Went in for a chiropractor for about a week straight, and by the end of it, she was like, all right, well, you guys can go now, you're done. So. I mean, but besides that, I haven't really had anything too big, which I'm kind of glad because I've rolled, I've rolled my Hornet twice. One was a really slow roll and one was kind of a violent one, but I haven't been hurt yet. I'd definitely love to get into the AMOD class, would probably be something I'd strive for because right now in the Midwest mods, yeah, there's a lot of competition, but when you get in those A mods, you got a bunch more horsepower, the car is way faster and everything and it's a whole new class of drivers to race with. When I build this car I'm going to build it to the edge of the rules. If you come in my garage and you're the tech man I'm going to escort you out. If you come in and you're the car owner you can stay. The Racing Life is sponsored by Performance Auto. Randall's Excavating, Nugget Vending, KRJB and KRJM, Elite Therapeutic Massage and Specialty Makeup. The Racing Life's Fan Pictures of the Week is sponsored by Superior Builders, specializing in post-frame building. Hi, I'm Tim Schaefer, and I'm wondering what your number really means to you if you're good for racing. Hi, my name is Wyatt, and my number is double zero, and yep. it means because I was born in 2000. Number 31X pure stock driver Tim Sheik's first race was at the drag strip at age 16. That was over 30 years ago and he's been involved in racing ever since. I started pitting for a guy by the name of Pete Peterson back in the early 80s and that's who got me into it. And I got to hot lap his car one night and it was all history after that. I've made a lot of people, a lot of wives made, mad about that because I've done that. I've turned around and let people hot lap mine and they bought race cars and you know how that works. My number, I originally got it, Ernie Brookins had the first Enduro in Fargo. And you didn't pick your number, you sent in your application and a week before the Enduro he called you and gave you your number and that was the number I got for the first Enduro race and it, I just kept it after that. I moved up classes. I ran a, a Wissota Modified back in the early 90s or late 80s and spent money faster than I could make it. And I look at the amount of money they spend on those cars now and we're in it for the fun. We just do it for the fun. If it isn't fun, we leave the car home for weeks. I was racing a Mod 4 back in the early 90s and I got, I was stressed out over it. I was leading points, but I got stressed out. I put a for sale sign on it and I sold it. 
Um, Brad came along and said, we have extra parts, we can build an extra enduro car, you should drive it for us. And that's how I started driving his vehicles and this was back in the early 90s and I've been driving his cars ever since. And I took his spare parts car and ran as good as the cars that they had that were all top of the line. We do a lot of R&D stuff, you know, like the engine work. He's an engine builder and we try some stuff, you know, that he'll try to sell out of his machine shop and we'll see if it works on these cars. And things blow up or if they don't blow up or if they just make you look embarrassed on the racetrack. We have two cars. We were running one car in between Glendon and Ada and there's a few things you have to change over on the cars and the car that we're racing here at the Stampede was our, we built that just for an Ada car and we had an older Monte Carlo we raced just at Glendon. We built that car for Ada. We never had any good luck with that car at Ada. It never won a feature at Ada. I think it was the green roll cage. Uh, we built a new car for Ada, which is the white one that I have, and that car, it won the third night out. This one that we, this other one, we converted it over to a Buffalo River car. Buffalo River cars tend to get beat up and dented really bad. We raced two years at Ada and never had a dent in that car. We raced three nights at Glendon and it looked like it got run through a meat grinder. But that car at Glendon is fast and it wins features at Glendon, but we cannot win a feature in Ada with that car. But the white car, wins features in Ada. And it, the, the rules were different, the weights were different Ada. We built the other car very, very light. And now we had to add weight to it, but now I think we're gonna take all the weight out and make it into a street stock. Brad was the tech man when I built that car. And I explained to him, I said, when I build this car, I'm gonna build it to the edge of the rules. If you come in my garage and you're the tech man, I'm gonna escort you out. If you come in and you're the car owner, you can stay when I built that car and I built it right to the edge of the rules and it was very fast. I think our plans for next year is uh, the Ada car might get converted into a street stock. We're still discussing that to see what we might do. If the other car sells, it sells. If not, it's going to show up probably once a month at Glendon or we'll just take it out and exercise it once in a while, maybe drag it down here and race it in Jamestown. We're not going to run a full season next year. We ran 35 plus nights this year and I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. If you're not a little bit scared when you're in that race car, you have no business being in that race car because you're going to get hurt or you're going to hurt someone. The Racing Life is sponsored by Bad Cats Design and Print Solutions, Dakota Engine Builders, Red River Cart Club, Fargo Rental, Midwest Motorsports Weekly, RentalRaceCar.com. Here is the Racing Life's Question of the Week. Hey Cole, my name is Cody Erickson, driver of the number 1X Modified. Uh, your question was how fast does a Modified go? I wish it'd go faster than it does, but um, I guess in Ada I would say we hit speeds between 85 and a little over 90 possibly. Glendon, 65 I would say is a pretty rough guess, but uh, that's how fast the Modified goes, thanks for the question. Over the years, Tim has acquired some superstitions about racing, some about good luck and some interesting ones about bad luck. Watch for fixing that, Dan. 
Don't wash your helmet during the racing season. Absolutely cannot wash your helmet. No green race cars. This car has been kind of bad luck that we're racing here in Jamestown because it's got a green roll cage in it. I consider that bad luck. The guy I pitted for, Pete Peterson, his wife washed his helmet for him once. He went backwards into the wall at West Fargo and pretty much wrecked the car. And he said, you can't ever wash the helmet, it's bad luck. And it, it always stuck to me after that. I've never, never changed. I've, I've, I'll buy a helmet brand new and I'll get three years out of it and I won't wash it that whole three years. <laughs> I haven't been injured to go to the hospital, but I've been stiff and sore. And I threw away my soda modified on the wall at West Fargo and it hurt for weeks. I turned right instead of turning left and hit the wall head on. Something broke in the car and I didn't break any bones. But I took a lot of chiropractic trips and I had bruises from the belts for a really long time. My head went so far forward it hit the steering wheel and I tightened the belts down till they hurt. That's how far a person stretches and doesn't know it. It didn't change my attitude. The only the thing that changed my attitude the most was uh, seeing a few people I know get hurt. Um, Dwayne Miller, when he got burned. My uh, whole thing on fire suits completely changed after that in safety equipment. I'm $1,000 when I climb in that car between the fire suit, the boots, the helmet, the gloves. I'm over $1,000. I always said, you, you, for buying safety equipment, you take the bare maximum amount that you can possibly spend on it, and then you go borrow five or $700 from someone, then you're set. If you're not a little bit scared when you're in that race car, you have no business being in that race car. Because you're gonna get hurt, you're gonna hurt someone. You have to have respect for, for everything. You know, we have too many people that get in thinking that I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna go really fast, they buy the cheapest safety equipment they can just to get by. It's more important to buy that new tire than it is to buy a one step better helmet. I, I have a problem with some of that stuff, the, the, some of the cheap stuff that they buy. I'm usually a little bit nervous before I get in the car. Once I'm strapped in the car, I'm as relaxed as I can get. I, I like pulling up next to the rookies when you're lining up and you look over at them and they're a nervous wreck in the car and I just, I have to laugh. It, once the green flag drops, I'm, I'm charged, my heart's pumping and I'm excited. I'm not as aggressive as, as some of the guys in my class because I don't like to work on it that hard. You know, I'm, I'm willing to take second and save the front of the car, which is a little different than some of the guys in our class that are just gung-ho. I think my driving has gotten a lot, a lot better. You know, I've calmed down a lot. First years I was kind of wild and I hit a lot of stuff and now I'm pretty calm now. You know, I'm very patient. I learned when you uh, set your goals to win everything, you have really bad years. If you just relax and let it happen, we tried for that points championship at Glendon and we stressed ourselves out and we finally just relaxed and just, let's just race and have fun and they came to us. Best racing advice is don't get too carried away with it. You know, you gotta have time for your family and friends and don't let it run your life. You run the racing program, the racing program doesn't run you. Some people are obsessed with it, they spend every nickel they have and a lot of nickels they don't have. And one thing, I've never gone into debt over a race car and I'll never go in debt over a race car. That's why I have a pure stock and not a modified or a late model. It costs $50,000 to build one of them cars if you want to run top five and competitive. And I don't physically think I could run one of those cars anymore to, and run up front. You know, I'm not young anymore. The big difference between 25 years old and 47 years old when you're going around a racetrack. Anything that, I mean, if there's a challenge involved or someone to be beat or something like that, I do love that. That's, that's what drives me, I guess. How much to rent the car for a night? And the light bulb went off, and now we're on car number two, uh, looking at car number three, and uh, the rest is history, as they say. I uh, went down the drag strip the first time when I was 16. And don't tell my mother that. I have words of wisdom about everything, but we'd be here all night listening to my ranting and raving. Mm -hmm.